I think everyone on CLG is a threat. Nian, Link, and Doublelift have all proven that they can carry games when they're very good players. CLG hasn't been the most aggressive team for objectives and tower pushing, so it is possible to recover against them. Welcome back to day two of Super Week. It's time for our first match of the day, Logic Gaming versus Cloud9. And this is the fourth time these teams have met this summer and the first time since week five. And while Cloud9 has won the last two games, it was CLG who handed the league's best team their first loss back in week two. Yeah, even though CLG has lost two of the three games versus Cloud9, Link has had a lot of success in this series. He has the highest KDA on his team versus Cloud9 at 8.33, and he was able to take C9's mid laner high down a couple notches. And even though the mid lane has pushed in CLG's favor all three games, Cloud9's Meteos has owned the jungle in their <laughs> last two meetings. The most <laughs> dominant jungler in the North American LCS bounced back from a mediocre performance in week two with a couple huge games in their two wins. On the other hand, CLG's jungler, Big Fat LP, has gotten beat up versus Cloud9. He's posted a dismal KBA of 1.5 in their three games. And even though Big Fat and CLG have struggled against Cloud9. They are hoping to pull off a repeat performance of yesterday's game where they turned it around against another team that has had their number in this summer split. That's Coast. CLG had a nearly flawless victory over Coast, and that was their first victory against Zion Spartan and crew all summer long. And one big reason for that was Link. He had a charming performance on Ari and had Coast running scared for most of the game. And while CLG won their only match yesterday, Cloud9 lost for the first time in their last 14 matches. So I'm thinking they were trying some things that they hadn't used right. uh, in the North American LCS before, and they fell flat on their faces before the minions even spawned. Because of Ball's face check very early, that cost them three deaths before there were even minions on the field. It'll make things difficult. Yeah. And also, <laughs> normally when Rumble is left up, they'd grab him First pick even, try and get balls that champion because he crushes with it. But they tried some new champions and some alternate play styles and definitely cost them. We'll have to see if they continue to try these sorts of things today or if that loss was just too bitter for them and they go back to the same old stuff that made them the most dominant team in the North American LCS. Wouldn't be a bad thing. But Cloud9 had the record setting 13 game win streak snapped with that loss, but they can still set the record for the most wins in the N or in the LCS split by winning two of their next four matches, which if history repeats itself isn't going to be too hard. So, <laughs> without any further ado, Let's get this game going and take a look at the lineups. On the blue side, it's kind of logic gaming. Top is Nian, big fat LP in the jungle. In mid is Link, double lift on AD carry, and right behind him supporting is Chowster. Then on the red side, it's Cloud9. Up top is Balls. In the jungle is Meteos. The mid is high, the AD carry is sneaky, and supporting is Lemon Nation. And the battle between the AD carries is our featured matchup of today. And that's CLG's double lift versus Cloud9's sneaky. So these two, they're both AD carries, but they fill different roles for their team. CLG tries to give double lift as much farm as they can. And because of that, there's a lot of pressure on him to carry. On the other hand, Sneaky, he often gives up CS that he would get to go help with these global objectives. And, you know, he's really a giver, not a taker. <laughs> but even be <laughs> even with that, he's second in gold per minute Sabotaged by the support. for AD carries. Of course, just behind double lift, who's number one. We'll have to see. <laughs> like the double lift, we heard where it comes from. It's the hand, it's a sleight of hand trick, so the double lift is sneaky. Mm. We'll have to see if one coincides He's with the other. He's definitely had some very magical duels too. I mean, some of the some of the things are just too good to be true. The two versus one when he is vain, tumbling around and barely surviving. Definitely worthy of his name. Makes it looks pretty good. We saw the Twitch mechanics earlier as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty much everything once he gets his hands on four or five items. It's double it all the way. We'll see if they can, Cloud9 can stop that from happening coming into the game. Rumble right out and Nocturne is out. Big Fat uses mm -hmm. that champion in so many different ways than just a long range initiation. He'll pick that champ. That's his most picked jungler in the LCS. So it's definitely some good bands here. We have seen. Another focus on him, they're also banning out Jarvan. So they're really focusing on Big Fat LP, whereas CLG are focusing on not letting Cloud9 go back to that same old uh, strategy that that won them all these games. And they 
are trying to ban enough champions that Cloud9 again right. try new stuff like they did yesterday and hopefully hopefully have the same results that they had yesterday. Would be surprised to see the Zac here taking that away from Meteos. They've already got his Nasus and Jarvan, which he likes quite a bit. His Jarvan game yesterday, 0-3-0 at one point. I believe 0-4-0 at the end. Yeah. Definitely hitting that KDA that most people have been looking at as near the top for the junglers. That's one. Jarvan is one that Meteos definitely plays and likes and talks about more. Hadn't used it too much in the LCS, though. And with them locking in that Zac, we'll have to see what is his sort of third tier jungler? He has used Lee Sin in these situations before, but we'll have to see if they actually want a champion like Lee Sin who offers more early game pressure and um, a lot more vision than other junglers, but not quite uh, the, the late game presence. Well, it looks like they go for pretty much the all around game presence, and that's going to factor in well because both Link and High choose assassin type mids, whether it's an ADZ or it's an APRE. Mm -hmm. And with them locking in the Elise today, I'm saying that's going to Meteos. Because yesterday when they locked it in, I thought it was going to Meteos because he loves that jungler. But they did, again, they stepped outside their yep. comfort zones. They were trying a couple things. Don't think they want to mess around for a CLG because, like they said, CLG is a very scary team. Even though they have uh, you know, a 50% record here, they're a team that has better records against better teams. Most of their losses right, are against right. Coast and Velocity, who are towards the bottom one of the I think they were one in five against the lower teams or something like that, Chad yeah. was saying. If I don't have the statistic correctly, Chad will correct me on it, or Reddit will, someone. But the, <laughs> the ball's choice for Shen is interesting as well because on the, the couch with Medios, he said, you know, Vols did amazing on Shen, and the question was that to him. And he's like, well, he's kind of, as he said, bipolar with it. Some days he absolutely loves it, and then next days he says it's not it's not going to do anything for our comp. So it seems like one of those hot days for, for Shen for him. I think that going on to 310 actually was good for Shen as well, because in 310, with all the, uh, the outer turrets having more armor, the first dragon before eight minutes... Um, has more importance and it's easier for the top laner to leave their lane and go down for that dragon if you're shen as soon as you hit level six you can stand united with the rest of your team yep. that are all down by dragon take that dragon and since the turret has more armor it's harder for that top laner to answer by taking your turret down and it gives you more time to get back up there so i really like that first pick for shen now um, sort of he's he's raised his importance level and we can actually hear the chatter between these two teams clg making it look like it'll be a little Trying to make it look like it's easy being green as they have the Zac Thresh lock in, but then they throw in Karthus for Link. Haven't seen that in a little bit here, but as well, the Cho'Gath coming out for this, Big Fat. This like is it. definitely a, a later game oriented team here for CLG -uh. than we've seen <laughs> no, than we've seen in the last few. Um, Link, he's done a, <laughs> an amazing job. Cloud9 he's, is just like howling in yeah, the background. He's, he's laughing at Cloud9's battle cries if you guys can't hear. <laughs> Uh, we can hear them all through the studio. But yeah, Link, uh, he did a great job on the roaming champions um, he, lately in the season, but very early in the season, he was good on these farming cha uh, farming mid champions. So if he takes that Karthus and he just CS as well, and then he can add the Requiems in for, uh, for side lane assistance, it's a, d a different play style for him, but it was forced on him by the Ari ban. And we saw Mancloud playing Karthus yesterday, and the way Vulcan did it was they really... Kept it in laning phase. As soon as he hit six, they went for the aggression, and it's like, oh, they got away. Nope, R. And they kept feeding at least three kills that way before they broke laning phase. We'll have to see how Counter Logic Gaming goes at it. Like you said, it's going to be a little bit later of a progression for them with the composition. Yeah, so we're seeing CLG, their style of this game is going to be a little more uh, slow in the beginning mm -hmm. of the game, mm -hmm. whereas Cloud9 are going to be the ones looking to make those early game moves. And they have also... Banned out Ari and taken Zed. So they banned out one of the best the assassins, assassins yeah. and then they picked the other uh, very strong assassin. So it's probably going to be that CLG old style of sending double lift as their split pusher, which is amazing on Tristana, like I talked about in the Vulcan game. Mm -hmm. Tristana, she shoves waves very well because of explosive shot, and she has great disengage too. So for an AD carry, it's a pretty good split pusher. And we forget, can't forget to touch on, obviously, what Cloud9 liked to run for consecutively for a few weeks and then has shied away from it and altered the Ash and Zyra picks. But now they are, Ken. Putting that composition together, you did say that High grabbed his Zed because we were focusing a little bit on CLG throughout the picks to see what really they're going to bring to the top team in the league. Yeah, I think that Cloud9, they will often grab the, the Ash Zyra or some variant of that mm -hmm. late 
when they have high going on a full damage solo laner because they they want to bring some crowd control to the team and if their middle solo is not going to be bringing that then they can easily just put it, bring that from the the side duo lane looks like they're going with a complete bully strategy here and they're going to walk this one through knowing they have the thresh but not seeing everyone definitely has to make them cautious here and CLG right now only left one ward behind them. They didn't have their own blue covered right now. So Cloud9 got a little bit of uh, some sneaky info in here. They've, they've got the, uh, the blue of CLG warded without them knowing. Whereas CLG, they were seen going into the blue of Cloud9. So Cloud9's aware that there's a ward down. So as they are walking about the jungle, we do see the high has picked up the red elixir, which we we usually know for that engage the all in, but we haven't seen it as of late. They pick it up and they wait for level six, they wait for more roam, and it usually comes in with the jungler now, not in a one v one situation. Well, high is definitely an aggressive solo laner, and we'll will see that all in from him if he goes up okay. against uh, Karthus because Karthus is very squishy early. So that's one that he would definitely um, like to like to go all in against, but. If he doesn't get that lane matchup, then then we will see the the similar strategy like you're talking about, waiting till a little bit later. Looks like well, he will though. We're definitely getting the two v one out of the eighty carry support lanes onto this. There is no doubt about that. It looks like we do have sneaky and lemonation getting themselves down there. Huh. So as they go around for the blue buff, we'll have to see what they do to force big fat LP on that. So Lemonation and Sneaky just left that golem buff there. Uh, Nian mm -hmm. did not even go to check it. Uh, and they just decide to pull back out. And usually before, we've actually seen Nian ah. taking Wolves here, and then Nian would actually back because he wouldn't get any experience. Coming through, Cloud9 looks to actually aggress onto this, and they won't find it. Big Fat's going to be there. Yeah, so the reason that Sneaky Looping and around. Lemon backed off that Golem is because they left it for Meteos. Mm -hmm. And with the early harass that they got onto Nian, he's had to back already. So at this point, what is the risk of trying to stop CLG in the jungle, knowing that one is going to happen after the other? Why hasn't there been that adaptation yet? So usually you would uh, be able to defend that if you had done some sort of switch with your AD and support, like okay. if they had brought them mid. But since it's just Shen and Zed in the area, they're outnumbered and they don't want to fight Cho'Gath this early. Cho'Gath actually very strong early in the game. The, the Vorpal Spikes add so much damage just to the auto attacks and Rupture is one of the best CC abilities in the game at level one. This is not something we have seen coming into Super Week now with the 3.10 patch. These stronger turrets, these dives coming in in the 3v1 situations, usually it's already the jungler here to help, and it will be Balls backing off with that sixth sense, knowing that he was closed in on. And so it's going to take a while for them to take this turret down because of the extra armor, but mm -hmm. they're not really looking to put all their damage into the turret. They're actually um, trying to get all the CS and just zone away balls from the minion line so that he doesn't get the experience from it. See Meteos coming from the backside. He gets into turret range. The exhaust is wasted there. Chowster on the death sentence, not wasted at all. Meteos actually got too far in range. One more shot. Double lift actually gets jump onto this one. Double buff for him. That transfer is complete. And it looks like they may go back in on this if the wave comes in soon enough. Great strategy from CLG right there, but Balls lands one more oh. time. And Big Fat LP misses Rupture. Chowster flashes over the wall to flay high and keep him away from Double Lift. The support of supports right now. Trying to keep Big Fat alive. High has his eyes on that Double oh, no, Right now, they secured both in the game. This won't be a kill on the high, but a back and forth leaves it a two to one for CLG. And high just barely able to pick up one of those kills. Big Fat could have ran a little bit farther back through the bush there. But still, very well played by CLG, and they came out on top of that easily. Double Lift is the champion that, or uh, is the player <laughs> they want to get going early. And now, not only do you get both those kills, but he has the double buff as well. This is so big. Their last matchup versus Curse was a late invade on Blue, and it didn't go well. For Tristana to get those kills early in the game, this is going to be huge for them. We'll see what he gets almost to the build, or gets the build draw oh. to cut this rather on his way to the blade. And we'll have to see how Cloud9 can react to stop any type of snowball in that bottom lane because they will focus it, like you said. Yeah, it's going to be very scary for Balls right now because Tristana with the explosive shot is going to be able to clear waves very easily and they can keep up the pressure on the turret. Meanwhile, top, Sneaky and Lemonation with the long range auto attacks have been able to chip down this turret. 
Double lift even taking golems now. He will take everything he can from here on out. The team knows he is the one to put the money into. Tier already coming out on to Link here five and a half minutes into the game. We have high backing, but he had not able to grab the Brutalizer. Looks like he wanted. And he got a kill down bottom, but he's missed out on a lot of mm -hmm. CS that was open in the mid lane. You can see how Link took advantage of the roam from high, and he just stayed mid and shoved that lane. Like we talked about Karthus, a champion where he's going to want to sit in that mid and farm up. He did a good job of that, so he hasn't lost too much um, due to the roam of Zed. And now he's just really going to have to worry about the, the level 6 here that High's about to tick. Because as soon as High does get level 6, he has the ability to 100% Link. Link's going to have to burn his flash the first time to get away from it. So knowing likely that Balls will be okay in this bottom lane, what's in the best interest? Well, he's not going to be okay. Oh. He's got red buff on him. Medios. The only reason to save him is Meteos <laughs> coming in. Elimination solo in the top lane. Nien as well. Could get the cell division to come out of the Requiem here to turn the tide of the fight. Lemon tries to get in. Getting his passive closer is what he was trying to achieve. Oh, Balls here goes left. in. That He used it. He says, King me. He has the ability to jump out now with that passive reset. It looked like the repel will go up. He's going to be forced to come straight down, but there's a lot of minions in between. They won't be able to get him High back with another the roam. He's seen out by this yep. ward. So it's up to Chowster to play defense once again. He's oh. level 6 oh. high right now. If he can land that death mark. Oh, the flipping ninja coming in from the side. Double if says, I'm out of here, man. Chowster, get those boots on. Make sure you tie your shoes when you uh. leave the house. He gets taken down by High. Two kills there, and High's roam is making up for that loss of CS. Now it's up to Link to shove this one in very quickly. You can see that Balls is heading to that mid lane to try and make sure that these CS are not wasted. And it's a good rotation by Cloud9. But the area that they lost out on was that top lane where Nien has been doing free farm of his own and they had to send Sneaky back over there. And we gotta see what Nien has been doing as well. How much CS he has in his pocket. That's 32 to 12 on balls. He has been harassed in that bottom lane on Shen, so it looks like they're actually going to transfer him over, allow him to soak up what's coming through mid, because high will be safer in the bottom lane. This is looking really good for CLG so far, because they were the team that was okay with taking it slow at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. and, and they are looking like the early game is in their pockets. They're going to want to change their direction now and look for control of Dragon. They already have a pink ward down on it. And when you have a blue buff Karthus in the mid lane, you can easily take that down very fast because lay waste do double damage to single targets. We'll have to see this adaptation here by Cloud9 by sending balls into the middle. You know, you see Cloud9's games, and yes, they sit on the top, but when they do lose games, it's very min-max. If they're losing, they lose it. If they're winning, they will absolutely win the game. And right now, Counter-Logic Gaming is definitely on the uphill to win this for themselves. Eight and a half minutes in, about a thousand gold in their favor. Cloud9 has tied up the turrets, but those kills coming from a lot of CLG roam and strategy and on Cloud9 the really want to make something happen now because they just got all of their tools available yep. to them. They've got the Ash Arrow for the engage, and they have Stand United. So what they're going to do is send Shen to split push and then wait for a good opportunity to land a Crystal Arrow, and they can just go all in. Because of Link's early Requiem, it's not back up for this, so he can't even add the extra damage there to sort of balance out the globals. Spectral Call coming out for Nien. Not many, not even any core items just yet. We're reaching that 10 minute mark. May see one of those Blade of the Rune Kings finished within the next three. If that goes on to high, that means his roam will go through the roof and we'll try to see him taking out double if possibly Link. And that's really where Cloud9 just excels is that team fight phase. We haven't seen the first dragon yet and that's usually where they turn the game around. And the first dragon was going to be right about now. <laughs> we talked about the pink word that they had earlier. They brought an extra one to make sure that nothing's been stuck in there. Here comes Crystal Arrow. This is going to be a five on five because Shen has a standing United available. Roots onto Big Fat. This is hard to take down that feast and a smite. Arrow goes in. It's on the backside. He throws the, the thorns right into it, and it looks like they are going to be able to get the pop up here. Like we said, Cloud9 excels in the team fight. One for Sneaky on the backside. It's pressure from the end. Nobody's there to help him tank right now. He's just absorbing damage without the return, and it looks like he goes down as well. Cloud9 excelling at Dragon. The story to that team fight was the zoning that Balls pulled off. He had Link and Double Lift running back down. So they split, they effectively split the team and caused the situation that we saw with the two green members, mm -hmm. the Nien and Chouster, tanking over there with no damage um, 
on the rest of Cloud9. No threat there. So great job, um, especially by Balls and Medios in that one. And the fight's always going in favor of Cloud9, but still a kudos to Big Fat LP for his ability to smite, getting out on Medios and that, and he didn't even have a chance to use the feast. He did have it's on cooldown, but we also have to shout out the uh, the combo of the Crystal Arrow plus uh, yep. <laughs> plus Zyra ultimate there because that's what made it all possible. When you're in the Dragon Pit, it's a perfect area to lay down that Strangle Thorns because it can pop up everything that's inside of that little pit. Clearing out that mid lane, making sure Link has time to get back. Counter Logic Gaming knows that. That was kind of back and forth. The global gold is good, but the fight phase for Cloud9 is very strong. So they have to figure out how to get around that and help Nian in his initiations. Good control here. Cloud9 looks to be activating something on the bottom lane. They've got three members here. Crystal Arrow is back up, so they have the engage that they want. They can go after Chowster because Chowster does not have his flash up and he doesn't have an innate escape like Tristana. Usually, you want to take out the mm -hmm. high priority target that is the AD carry, but in this situation, Thresh is the one that you want to go for, because not only is Tristana hard to lock down, but if you don't go after Thresh, then he'll throw out a Dark Passage as well, and that's just another escape to have to so worry about. where do we sit now? Because it's not normal for an AD carry support to go back to a down lane. Usually, you would see that go mid, but they're all matching up now in the meta. Ooh, it looks like it will be a 3v3 uh, matchup. So even a bit at, more of a party now. Too. And there was a ward that saw Meteos come in here. So Cloud9 are sort of at a disadvantage here. They're unaware that Meteos has been spotted. Chowster taking a few two steps. And it looks like Cloud9 does not like the situation. They're saying it's a little too quiet here for comfort. 12 and a half minutes in, still only one turret down. The armor is wear off, worn off at that eight minutes after diminishing up until that. And four to four in kills as Cloud9 was, like we said, able to grab that fight. A few more items here. Ball's going, looks like, for that Spirit Visage quite soon with its change. We'll probably see both of these top laners um, grab Spirit Visage mm -hmm. because both of them are doing mostly magic damage, so it helps that each of them in their lanes. Both of them have self-heals, uh, Shen with his Whirlpool Blade and yep. Zack with his Blob Blitz, and both of them love cooldown reduction. So every single stat on that is amazing for both Shen and Zack. We'll probably see that each of them uh, rush those items. But now we're seeing Zack come in the, into the mid here for a low gank on high. High is going to get hit up, but he actually goes straight in onto Link. That Deathmark will not kill him whatsoever. We do see the Shen ultimate coming in, though. Power in numbers for these guys. The end's forced to walk out of this. Big Fat waiting on the outside, but they cannot reinitiate. Forgot about the Stand United there, or they mistimed it. CLG get a little bit too handsy here. The Rupture lands, though, oh, and they, they grab get high, high with the Death Sentence. Everything is just happening for them right now, but it's a great Strangle Thorn coming out of Lemon Nation. It looks like they may be able to turn this fight around. He blasts Sneaky back, knowing that is trouble in his face. They pick up the blobs and a kill for themselves. Six to four now. After Link's already dead, CLG stick around in the mid lane, and they stay up at Cloud9's tower. Very, very interesting choice by them. Big Fat trying to do what he can, being a boss in front of the turret, throws out a few ruptures, and it doesn't look like they are gonna worry too much about the Void creature taking out that turret and possibly denying the blue buff. Double, double lift is able to grab the red, so they, they mm -hmm. secure one of them, but a great job there. Uh, Medios doesn't need to help the rest of Cloud9 take down that mid turret, so they get two objectives there at the same time, having him steal blue and the rest of the team and take that mid turret. A lot of chaos being created in these fights with not too much happening for CLG now. One being, like you said, taken down and then trying to fight that, cause them that mid turret. And now Cloud9 can start to set up a little bit more offense where they've been playing defense. Maybe a little more pressure on the next Dragon coming up in one minute. They've now taken the gold lead by 600 and that middle vision with that turret. Yeah, even with that fairly large misstep there by CLG, it only brought the gold back to around even here. Cloud9's mm -hmm. lead is very small at this point, and CLG are still feeling okay because they have double lift side pushing. Not only is he on the Tristana, but he also has red buff right now, so he feels very secure in this side push, even though they don't have wards in on the uh, golem buff. You know, Kobe, calling out this game to be a late game if you looked up late game in the dictionary, you'd see that. Catalyst to Protector, Tear in Karthus's inventory, and the items around the map. Because these guys trying to charge up, trying to get those items ramped up. So 
won't see. And actually, I believe Link is one of the guys that doesn't go for Rabadons right away. He builds the Void Staff, he gets the Seraph, and he kind of goes for that persistent, I'm um, annoying damage rather than burst. My Requiem is going to do everything. Yeah, he's going to go for that those ramp up items. Right. Uh, CLG going to go very late game here. When he gets the Rod of Ages and the Seraph's Embrace, those take a while to stack up with the power. So they're, they're already looking, you know, 10, 15 minutes down the road here. And the story in the meantime is going to be this side push that Double Lift keeps doing. And if Ash is going to be able to catch him with a Crystal Arrow. Now this Dragon is warded here. So CLG could try some sneaky steal, but they wouldn't want to do a full contest at that Dragon because four members of three completely outnumbered. So it's kind of been a sway here. That first dragon went in favor of Counterlogic Gaming. Cloud9 wins the fight, takes mid, takes blue. Now they've taken dragon. So Counterlogic Gaming is definitely going to have to put, in the, put their foot in the door sometime soon because that snowball is starting to roll down the hill. Yeah, Cloud9, they were able to pick up some kills even on the first dragon from CLG. Mm -hmm. So it was a pretty good answer by them. And they have stayed true to their uh, very early game dragon-centric style. We'll see if they can keep the pressure on. Double lift moving safely with Chaucer and Big Fat in mid here. Big Fat not as able to be as annoying Ooh, as he plans. was, but Chaucer is hitting that death sentence. As we were saying, Big Fat's idea of being that jungler is to be in everybody's face all the time. Cho'Gath can't do that as much as Nocturne, but he is trying to do a damn good job of it in mid. 3v3 there, 1v1 in the bottom and in the top lane. So everybody's spread thin right now trying to hold these lanes. And Double Lift right now is a very, very confident man. He is feeling extremely strong. He has the three kills plus 160 CS right now. Already with Blade of the Rune King. Oh. Wow, the Ash Crystal Arrow is coming out. They're looking for the all in here. High's getting into position. Booyah! But it does not hit the correct. That was a nice shot. Oh, he goes all the way and he brings in Shen with him. Both comes into the fight, but they both get popped off by a perfect rupture. And they all get slowed down right here. That means all of Cloud9 committed to the mid lane, whereas CLG had both the top and the bottom lane pushing here. Double lift, slow. <laughs> Cat and mouse games going on around the Baron pit, which so, nobody's attempting at this point. Wasn't very good communication right there. <laughs> Double lift was heading up top, and he's like, okay, they're all probably going to be coming here. Nobody told Nien. He just stayed up top working on that turret. And all of Cloud9, they've got four people up here. He's able to use the less bounce for the tenacity. Oh, wait, he's turning around. Nope, maybe. They are going pretty hard on him. I don't think he's going to get any help here. He does get the lander click on it. Yeah, goes to the side. The repel will not be in range. Thank you, last update. Chouster's there to help them. And that was Cloud9 being split in their decision. Balls and Medios wanted to chase that and go for that kill. But the damage, Sneaky and Lemonation, didn't follow in on that one. They were actually splitting back and just going to let Nian go. They didn't expect that cocoon to land. So... A non-unified Cloud9, not a scary Cloud9. And CLG are able to get a mid turret from it. So coming out of all that, it was, as we said before, the 3v3 in middle with the 1v1 up top and in the bottom lane. So a lot of movement for just that little bit of gain, that little bit of action that we had now. Coming into 19 minutes, the gold lead still is exactly 1,000. Looking for double lift here. In favor of Cloud9. Double lift can jump over the wall, so I wonder how much he's actually going to use on him here. He knows it's an he's easy escape. He uses it quite all of it. Oh, he goes over the wall, gets the cube. No, no, he didn't hit the no, exit. No, the, the barrier. Close. Oh my god, he got the barrier bait in. More mechanics. The shield of Jouster <laughs> comes in at the end, just in case for the last ignite tick. But so the way you want to play the Tristana Zed matchup, if you do find yourself is like that. in that no. split pushing, <laughs> is exactly like that. I'll just explain why that was the right way to go. Not only was there a wall there for Double It to jump over, but you don't want to use your Buster shot first because when the Death Mark goes off, the Zed shadow right behind you gives him an easy answer to completely counter that Buster shot. And the reason Double was confident to go back in with just his barrier is because he still had it and he could knock back. Uh, high, that few extra inches. The flash from high almost caught him off guard and finished it, but great job by Double Lift. And the confidence is always there from him. There he wasn't never even an orb walk. He stood still. Away. Stood still. What's going on? How's it going? At that point, you're just like, oh my god, can I have it? Do I have enough damage? Yes. <laughs> All calculated. All calculated. That gold was just sitting at even, and it will creep again and again. 29-2 to 29-3. Both teams really sitting on the same amount of gold. Two turrets to three. The dragon's helping to bring that in, but 
to be even. You gotta look at that CS in the lanes. 193 to 146 coming in for Link. He's making sure he's getting his tier stacked. And then we're gonna he's have a rematch camps. down here bottom. So high is the oh, sneaky dear. Uh, into this bush. But the same thing can easily happen. This time he's there's no for that minion This wave. time there's no flash for high for the extra gap closer, but there's also oh no barrier double for double lift. And Double Lift is getting really, double really far going here. deep. So he's going to have to use his rocket jump first. There it is. One goes up. He actually gets hit. He jumps under the wall. He didn't get it all. But he does get oh. that up. Oh, man. He's got the stand united that time. It is second time's a charm on this one. Yeah. You have to keep on running after that um, buster shot because High still had his living shadow. And uh, Double Lift there, he wanted to get a few auto attacks in. Forgot about the other gap closer. Nian in the top. Doesn't look like he's communicating with the team too much, but he is making sure his eyes are on that mini-map. As you can see, these players, if they're on the screen, just peek down to the right, peek down to the right. Always. It's second nature. They don't even think they are they know they're doing it, but they are keeping themselves aware and that hard hat on as we're getting into those second-tier turrets. The deep wards are going to have to now, start being placed. And there's no deep wards for High here. Minutes. He's got very shallow <laughs> wards, so it's going to be pretty dangerous for him. I'm out of the bush. High's going to try to live this one, but it looks like we're going to get a blue buff transfer, and that's going to go over to Link. Oh, uh, yeah. So, though, those deep wards you were uh, about to go <laughs> into there would have helped a lot. A little bit. We've got this one line of wards from Cloud9 that's just behind the Dragon Pit, but that's not the route CLG are going to be taking through their own jungle here. So we just see high and double lift basically playing mirror strategies right now. Each of them overextending without the proper ward coverage, and each of them paying the price. CLG. Teetering that gold deed back in their favor, and this will give it a nice jump here. It might even be 2k, and it is. Now, the difference between Double Lift's mistake and High's mistake was that High's mistake coincided <laughs> with the Dragon timer. So, it was just a bit unlucky on the timing there for Cloud9 that CLG were also able to capitalize on that kill with the objective. Everybody getting a little feisty after they do Dragon, seeing if they <laughs> yeah. can catch something out, but... They just burn the ult of Lemon Nation. That won't take too long to be up. He gets that engagement every minute and 40 seconds right now. So whether they have the arrow at minute and 30 seconds or Lemon Nation's disengage at 140, these guys are pretty safe to turtle it out at the turret right now. Six to seven, seven to six, I should say. Kills in favor of Cloud9, gold in favor of CLG. And Nien looks for the backside of the turret as the turret goes down. They pick up the gold there. No loss yet in this fight, but a bit of health. The arrow comes back. A lot is hitting Nien right now. Double up to the backside. Left completely alone. The auto attacks are coming out, but it's too spread out. It's one after the other. He couldn't focus one person. They were able to get the objective before mm -hmm. they lost their support, though. So CLG pretty happy with that push, even though they did, uh, Chaucer did go down. Looks like they're pretty confident to go in on this one, knowing that box is down. That box inhibits a lot of their movement and definitely keeps a few of the people in the fight they want to get out. Balls is really the only one that wants to dive in with High, and they want Stand United to be up, which yeah. it is, so they're split pushing. And, and that's the reason High is so careful right now about going all in. He did not use his ultimate in that fight because he didn't want to commit. There's so much zone control on CLG. Even at this stage in the game, they're already uh, controlling several circles on the battlefield here. We have Link who's trying to be in the middle. And then with Big Fat LP and Nien um, respectively controlling the, the front and the mid lines, it's very difficult for High to get to double lift and take him out. Especially with Chowster always waiting to throw the Dark Passage and save double lift from High. And we got to remember that that's our matchup of the day is double lift and sneaky. Right now it's 4 1 and 0 to 1 0 and 3. There's a bit of CS in favor of sneaky, but he's there for the arrow. He's there for the initiation, the kite for the team. So these guys, like Jat said in, in, in yesterday's game, the teams themselves had different objectives. These AD carries have different objectives in the roles. And sneaky's got that static shiv. So he actually mm -hmm. uh, does a really good job of shoving side lanes too. He's got decent wave clear now. And they can actually have him far off and then throw the long range crystal arrows for the extra long stun yeah. when it does hit and then just come in and join the fight after. Ooh. Ooh, Lemon with a good dodge. Death sentence not going to be written just yet. Good damage from one volley and a big fat LP. He does have that warden so he's got some armor under his belt. They try to initiate again. 
Dodging out the wall. Oh, the no. Double lift right in the front of the fight. Strangle throats go up. He is not coming out of this one alive. Chowster, no, Link is going to be the next one. The carries are down. Let the damage follow from the rest of the team. That is not how CLG want to play fights. The main focus of their composition is double lift and trying to protect double lift. The waves just parted right there and <laughs> let the arrow strike right onto his head. So Cloud9, as, as soon as that happened, you saw them. Nobody hesitates. Burn every single thing they have on Double Lift. And Lemon Nation's placement of that Stranglethorn was mm -hmm. amazing. Double Lift's jump still landed in it, if, even if he didn't get popped up by the first part. So everything, picture perfect there for Cloud9, what they've been waiting for. And that actually turned into a Baron for them as well. So they are pretty they're looking pretty good here they're going to return to their split pushing strategy and and then wait until they have the right opportunity to use their crystal arrow engage let's take another look and see just how oh, that cocoon. it cocoon it was actually the cocoon so medios is the one <laughs> should be getting all the credit for this because it was actually sneaky following up there and you're right it was a great string of thorns they literally did use every single Ability on that, and now we're gonna jump into again. <laughs> High getting caught. Oh, he flashed it, and oh. then he gets a death sentence to the left. High with his blue suede shoes on. Very close dodge here, and now the rest of Cloud9 joins. So, this is a mistake that we would see uh, from a lot of teams in the past: is they would continue that chase even after they've exhausted all of their picking uh, abilities. They would have paid. CLG would have paid for that with a triple kill right there, because the rest of Cloud9. We're rushing to High's aid. Checking out these items as we look at some inventories. High now getting the Black Cleaver, like you said, sneaky finishing up that Static Shiv, which just is going to overall create more pressure on the Siege power of Cloud9 and CLG. They have Karthus, they have Tristana. They're going to be able to stop this, but they can't turtle forever with that composition. Yeah, one of the, the great things about that Static Shiv is the Wave Clear, and part of split pushing is the rest of your team that sticks together, the four-man squad, they need good wave clear yeah. uh, so that they can buy more time for your split pusher. Now Balls with a Stand United back up, he's going to just stand up in that top lane, and, and they have so much disengage that they can actually afford to have two split pushers. They're actually not making use of this Baron buff by sieging up, and they'd rather gain as much gold as they possibly can from all three lanes. Even once this Cloud9 team gets up to that base, they have a lot of poke skill shots to work with from Cocoon on Medios, Sneaky, and Zyra as well. So we'll have to see how they decide oh, to yeah. get in. We Cloud just saw yeah. the effectiveness <laughs> of that Cocoon. <laughs> Counter Logic Gaming getting themselves out. You can see them waltzing around the wards of Cloud9 right now. Not seeing, I'm heading over to Chowster. He does not have an Oracle, so they're trying to rock the pink wards right now. We'll have to see if they can regain control of their own jungle, because right now that is being fed to Cloud9 consistently. And we just saw High getting caught there, basically. But because the champions that CLG have picked are more towards team fighting and they're not oriented for pickoff kills like right, that, chase they, down, grab they, somebody. Couldn't, they couldn't capitalize on it. You know, you land the rupture. After that, it's just going to be uh, Nian trying to come in with a slingshot, and he didn't even go for it. So. Uh, that's really the, the difference in the, the choices for the comps here. It's High going to try and just burst out. Nian is going to get it. Whoa, that was pretty crazy. He may be able to. Yeah, he's easily going to be able to get these down. I was he's checking to see if anyone was coming through on the jungle. But that's a kill going in for High. And it's pretty odd now that they're going for the 1-3-1 push. <laughs> well, it works out great. It works they've out got, beautifully. They've got Shen, who can join the fight. And then yep. they've got Zed, who is the best duelist one of the best duelists right, in right. the entire game here. So we just saw him in action. Nian got caught off guard. And their triple lane push right now is paying off because all three lanes are hitting turrets. They have done so much with this Baron buff. Cloud9, that is, obviously. But they are continuously pushing. And this is one of the things, you know, what jungler can do in the early part of the game, just in, in terms of aggression and pressure, is that you mentally scare the other team now with whatever you do. You can see how much consideration CLG is putting into just respect for Cloud9 right now. Even, like I said, at these turrets, they can't be turtled. Exactly. CLG have to play very safe now. Their, their mindset is turning towards very, very late game now. Their, their savior is going to be that link and double lift combo. It's going to be all about 
those two mm -hmm. trying to deal the damage while the rest of CLG play interference and make the battlefield as hard as possible for Cloud9 to get to those uh, targets and get to Double Lift to take him out. I wouldn't be surprised if Double Lift went with something like a Quicksilver Sash to be able to cleanse off that death mark because that's the most scary thing for him right now is high. Who's currently waiting in a bush looking to stab him in the back? <laughs> Hatching that ward as well. Look at this, a good 60 look at this seconds plan, of though. safety. It's still, I think he could still come oh. out with a kill on that one. That would be such a scary engagement by them. But Double Lift, if you use the ultimate right, does he, you really want an ultimate barrier and try to kill high just off that one? Can, can they push the rest four members for, for, for Double Lift? What do you mean, kill him off what? In the bottom lane. Yeah, they were using Double Lift as, as bait there, and Yen was, was waiting in the bush. All right, we'll see where they go with it. 12 to 6, 31 minutes into this game, and 6,000 gold in the lead. Looks like they will start to position themselves towards the top side, get that wave pushed, try to at least get all three waves pushed again. Kind of that Dignitas style that we've seen so often from them, but not lately. With the Baron buff gone right now, it'll be a little bit more tricky for Cloud9, but they can just return to the same strategy because still anyone on CLG is not going to be a match one-on-one -on -one for High. The only thing that High is going to have to worry about are those little sneaky bush uh, baits that CLG was just uh, setting up a couple seconds ago. So he's going to have to get some vision for himself or call down uh, Lemon Nation to bring vision for him. Slow movement by both of these teams right now as we crest into about 35 minutes into this game. Hawk shots present, giving them a little bit of safety with 50 seconds on Baron. I don't think Cloud9, Cloud9 obviously has the timer, but it's nothing they're focusing on right now. I'm pretty sure they know they can win a, a matchup because of how Counter Logic Gaming is playing right now. In the three man split push, or three man, four man in mid, is still high in the bottom lane by himself, but two are left here to defend him. And they're gonna, just going to go with the dual lane here. Remember, they still have Crystal Arrow, so when they want the engage, they will get it. All of the, all of the catch and pick potential, though, for Cloud9 are skill shots. So you, it's going to have to rely on the ability of Meteos, Lemonation, and Sneaky to actually hit those ones. So far, they've been spot on, and they've almost looked like targeted abilities. That gold lead is just slowly growing. CLG is sharing every bit of CS that is coming into this base besides what may come into double lift as he goes to a solo lane. Obviously, CLG continuously trying to get that strategy of double lift split push in. It only worked up until about 15 minutes. The High grab goes in on a Chouster. It's going to be Link taking some damage from Meteos as well, but they have to be careful that Zanya's is finished now on to Karthus. Big thing's going to happen here. That was exactly what CLG would like, though. It, if they can CC high like that and pull him in, if they take out the threat of Zed assassinating Double Lift, then they will feel so much better about the ensuing team fight. I'm looking over. So we got Thresh Box out of that. We're going to have to see how careful these guys can play it. Balls in the bottom lane. They are not going to get contested on this one. They will be able to grab up the Baron a little bit easier of mode running into the base now. We'll have to see if they even hesitate on this one. And CLG, there's no way that they could go contest that Baron because they're behind and they don't have vision. Mm -hmm. So the only play that they could make would be catching out Balls in that bottom lane. And it was a great job by Balls realizing that it was the one of the few ways that they could actually give CLG a step back into the game. And so he backs right off. Infinity Edge now for the 80 carries. As we look around and see what is coming into the hands of all of the damage dealers now. We actually have the Rylai's coming out. We see most Elise go for that kill, Elise, towards the late part of the game. We talked about Zed earlier. He has now finished the third item, picking up that last Whisper. And we're just looking over still the Zanyas as we spoke about before. So really only three items coming in near 35 minutes. A slower game for both teams here. And Double Lift has also picked up the Quicksilver Sass. So he, he has a semi-answer here. Kai had some money on him. For, uh, <laughs> yeah, just grabbing a Guardian Angel straight up. <laughs> yeah, Double Lift trying to get the Quicksilver, as you said. Everybody's trying to stay safe, but uh, with, with all eyes on you, it gets difficult. Now, the thing is, he can use his Quicksilver on a Death Mark, yeah, but he might have to use it on the Crystal Arrow first because we've already seen him get caught or out. Or a Cocoon. And, and yeah, exactly, <laughs> or the Cocoon. You know, he can only use it on one thing here. So if he uses it on the Cocoon and then doesn't dodge the Crystal Arrow, exact same thing is going to happen to him. 
And again, we look at the, the play style of Cloud9 here as they've, they've pretty much definitively taken a 10,000, well, pretty much, they have a 10,000 gold lead, and they've again prioritized quite a bit, more CS than usual onto Sneaky, but the kills, more of the damage prioritized onto a carry. That's high, that's Zed. He's 7-2-2 two, and two now. These guys are always keeping their mindset into the goal of winning in that path there. And a lot of the, you know, it, it looks like, uh, you know, they try and feed people kills, mm -hmm. but the duelists are the ones that usually just pick them up. And Zed, yep. with his passive, with the extra damage he gets when someone's below 50%, he naturally <laughs> does finish people off. And if he's the one side pushing, and he's he is the one that's uh, fighting people straight up one-on-one, -on -one, then that's naturally where all, all, uh, a lot of the gold is going to go, both from the minions and the kills. Ooh. Well, they're going anyway. Even we'll just with the pretend mid. nobody saw that one. Going back on to double if They don't even need the arrow to go in. This is the confidence I was talking about coming off that last Baron, that 10,000 gold lead. The Zanyas finally goes down, but it's enough for them to disperse. The chaos is not enough, and Cloud9 easily walks through this fight. Looks like they will have a few up towards the end. In the end, trying to hold off what he can. Quicksilver Sash, not enough right there to save double lift and with i going all out on him they were able to burst him down without even the crystal arrow so congratulations to cloud nine looks like they do not continue their trend of losing on super week they have to win two of their next four games to get that best record and looks like they will be on course to do that taking out the nexus now 36 37 minutes into the game the ggs are set and cloud nine has the victory Congratulations, it was a bit of a rocky start for them, but they were able to pull it back and they played the game plan that they set out to at the beginning with the split pushing Zed and the split pushing Shan. They have quite a bit of top choices in their hands right now. If, if comfort picks were a thing to be said, uh, Medios, I remember, was one week like, I want to play Elise. And then they banned it from me. I want to play Elise. So he got his Elise. You have high on his Zed. Sneaky on Ash. Sneaky has shown us that he pretty much plays everything at a pretty consistent level. So whatever is in his hands is going to be the utility it needs to be or the damage it needs to be. And Lemonation getting his Zyra in. And then there's balls again. <laughs> he just does what he does and wins. I was so sad, dude. I'm like, yeah. oh my god, I'm so retired. A lot of people lose track of uh, Cloud Nine's champions because they feel like they're so good with everything. But yesterday, Vulcan said, you know, the reason that they p first picked that Zed is because it's High's main champion. We saw right there why it's his main champion. He <laughs> loves going for those duels. He loves being the split pusher and grabbing uh, the side lane seven, minion farm. Seven of the 17 kills. And it was like, you know, four or five times he would go right back at double lift looking for that one versus one duel. Made a couple mistakes in some, but in the end he came out on top. And that's different too, right? You go in and you do the 1v1 and you die. <laughs> but you do it again because you're confident enough to win. You know what the you know circumstances are of the next fight when you have the next item. And, and that's, then that's mentality of the when game. it transfers to the team fight stage, he's still doing the same thing, going in all in on double lift. Yeah. And yes, High will die uh, doing that, going all in. But he does have a lot of area of effect damage when he goes in with the, the shadow slashes from Zed. So he's getting a lot done for his team there as well. And that's also why he just bought that Guardian Angel straight up. So that when he does die, get right back up. Zombie Karthus, Zombie Zed. <laughs> you get both one and the same. All right, guys, we got to take a short break. But when we return, we'll be joined by Cloud9's manager, Jack. And then it's time for our second match of the day, Velocity Esports versus Curse. The North American League Championship Series will be right back. Don't touch that browser.